So the curry comb is a good place to start. And I'm gonna start with his feet sort of in place. Maybe I work my way to the rear. And then I'm gonna to step to the side just to get him to consider me just a little bit more. He's looking away, but it's all right because he's allowed to be curious and he is, he is considerate of me. He's not looking away and forgetting that I'm there. But every once in a while, I like to change it up. I like to brush and then I like to move their legs, move, the, move their hooves. And so it's sort of the same concept, just different ways. So the barrel, we could roll that barrel and obviously he's looking at it really well. He's got his ears forward on it. Now there's that a little bit of a skeptical look, but what if I arc that barrel? And so now he's got to track it, but arc it. And then that right hind leg has to cross under like there, like there, see that? And so one of the, one of my main, I, main points to working with, with people starting young horses is when they're nervous about something, they first need to look at it. Then they can bend and then that bend can go through their body. And then it would be really nice if he'd cross his hind legs and face up to something. And so we're teaching that with the barrel. We're teaching that even in our presentation when we're brushing. And then if I had a whip, it's not a weapon, it's a whip. So just like the barrel as well. So I lift it up, I draw him to it, I start to arc. Even right here, he's slightly crossing the hind legs. So I start to arc around, good. I turn, lower my posture, and we settle. And then I'm going to pick it up again. Pick up, I'm lifting my posture, lifting the whip. I might even lift my lead rope. There, and then I settle, but this time I rub it on him. So lifting, movement, action. Settling, softening, and then inaction. So we're getting him used to that whip. This and right there, he's just a little bit, a little bit goosey, nervous with it, sensitive with it, good. Lifting, moving, settling, stopping, lifting, moving, but this time I took him in a, a slight arc around me, settle, halt. Always wanting to come, be able to come back to bringing that life down at any time and come back to a, a halt. So different objects. And I think that not going at a horse, but first having him track it, come forward, chase the danger, look at that point, you know, come to the thing that is interesting. Now see, when I bring it under, that can be really hard, but I, I was far enough away. But see how when I bring that under or over, switching eyes. And so we're getting to where he's just tracking that. And then I start to cut more of a, sort of a, uh, more of an angle. I tend to go more maybe past his side, more and more, until I go past his rump. And so, in a sense, it's sort of coming at him just a little bit more. But I don't want to present it in a way where he thinks that I'm directing it at him in a negative way. See, I'm coming past his rump at more of an angle, but then I follow up with bringing him to it. So I lift it. I'd come past that rump a little bit more, bring him to it. Now I come over the top, now maybe I touch him. And notice we'll wait here till maybe he blinks a little bit. Maybe I could even step him forward with it. That'd be better. If, if just because we can have him touch the, we can touch him with a flag, standing still, doesn't mean he would touch it in motion. But if he could carry the flag in motion and walking, chances are he could handle the flag standing still. So if this were a raincoat, or there's a little change, a little lick and chew. And I realize he's still skeptical, but he's learning. He's not getting in, into trouble with these things. Now here I was more direct. 
put it on there, but watch, I'll step to the rear slowly and then we'll just go off and I'll walk away. And then he has a chance to sort of relax a little bit and walk. When I stop, he stops. Good, coming over the top. Good, good, that's fine. Now if he, he sort of decided to move his feet, which I think is actually a good choice because he didn't know where to go. So he said, I'll circle around you. And I think, you know, that would be all right with me. What I don't want to have a horse do is get there stuck, all four legs stop, be straight, and get stuck. And this is how I set things up if it's, a, if it's an arena ball or a, uh, a bike. I've done bicycle, getting horses used to bike riders. I would do the same thing that I'm doing now. And you might say, oh, it's the same presentation he used with the flag and the curry comb and the brush. And, it's the, and it is, it very much is. So the idea being that first we draw him to, then we arc. And why? Well, he, he looks, he draws, he can see it out of one eye, he can cross, he can bend and he can cross the hind legs, he can face it, he can turn and look at it. And then it gets to a point where he goes, well, just, I'd like to stand. And I say, okay, let me just put that pad on you. And, and you, could, you could stand. And now I'm gonna get lively, ready? Lifting, and I'm gonna work the pad where my leg will be when I ride. And I bumped, put some motion and life in the pad, and then I might stop. And we start. And this is what I do when I ride them. So I get this real, really good. Really, really, really good.